Meat in moderation is actually probably perfectly fine. I'm from Germany. I like my sausages. Um, I think it's fine to occasionally have that. I probably shouldn't say that, but... Hi, I'm Tina Fitzmaurice. I'm one of the medical oncologists at St. Charles. The question is, why did I specialize in oncology? So if you're an oncologist, you really establish a very close relationship, not just with the patient, but also with the families. You follow them often and hopefully for years. So I really liked this, this long-term relationship with patients and with their families. What cancer treatments are you most excited uh, excited about? So we have now a very exciting cancer therapy, which is called immunotherapy, where we stimulate your own immune system to um, hopefully recognize and kill cancer cells. And that's usually your immune system's job. Often the cancer cells actually figured out how to turn off the immune system. And so this, this new treatment, immunotherapy, is teaching your immune system again to kill the cancer cells. They are also like really exciting other areas of immune therapy. Um, for example, there is CAR T-cell therapy. You actually take a patient's T-cells and you re-engineer them so that they recognize certain markers on t that are only on cancer cells. And then you infuse those T cells back, and then these T cells kill the cancer cells. The success that CAR T cell therapy had for, for example, certain types of leukemias or lymphomas, where patients have gone through multiple, multiple lines of treatment and were often on the brink of death and hospice, and they get CAR T cell therapy and the, the cancer melts away. Like sometimes you can see, you know, within days, large lymph nodes shrink. The main toxicity with that treatment is actually that the cancer dies too quickly and it overwhelms your body's ability to get rid of the dead cancer cells. The next question is what are the best ways to prevent cancer? First of all, healthy weight, lots of exercise, healthy diet and eat your fruit and vegetables. When I did some research, I was actually amazed on like the effect of fiber in your diet and how that impacts potentially your responding to certain cancer treatments. Some other diet effects, like for example, red meat. Lots of patients always ask, you know, do I have to cut out my meat consumption? Meat has been shown to increase your risk a little bit for colorectal cancer mainly. Same thing with processed meat, but the risk is fairly small. Also a big, big factor is sugar. It seems to negatively influence your microbiome. So like, what is the microbiome? Everything that lives in and on you, that's not you. So you have uh, viruses, you have bacterial pathogens living on your skin, in your mouth, in your gut. You have probably about as many cells through the microbiome on your body as your own body cells. The microbiome might actually play a pretty big role in the response to immunotherapy. So, uh, you know, yes, if you can, limit your processed sugar. Some people might have heard um, about the bad luck theory. We are often asked, why did I get cancer? Like, how did that happen to me? I lived a healthy life. I did everything right and I still got cancer. But we now know about cancer is that it's a sequence of event. It's not a single genetic mutation that happened. It's really like at some point in your life, one cell became a cancer cell or became a precancerous cell. And then ultimately over time, more and more defects in that cell developed and ultimately that cell became a cancer cell. A lot of um, these cancer mutations they can't be prevented. No matter what you do with your lifestyle, no matter where you live, about your genes, we are human, the body makes mistakes, so these cells can develop mutations. The good news is that you actually do need multiple mutations for a cell to become cancerous. And some of these mutations, they might actually come from your lifestyle. So it's more likely to develop these additional mutations if, for example, you're a smoker or if, for example, you are obese. So in order to avoid maybe that crucial third or fourth mutation that a cell needs to become cancerous, it is quite important to uh, work on cancer prevention in terms of lifestyle and environmental exposures. This has been Off the Cuff with Tina Fitzmaurice and I'll see you next time.